Have we been knitting German short rows wrong all these years? Hi everyone, Norman here. Only yesterday I wanted to record a quick little tutorial for my second YouTube channel where I wanted to show you how to knit German short rows the traditional way. After all, I'm German and I learned these stitches when I was 10 and I've been knitting them for the past three decades or so. Nothing special for me. But then I had a very close look at my swatches and I noticed that the stitches I produced on the pearl side appeared to be twisted. And then I panicked and I was like, am I teaching you something wrong? Have I been doing this wrong all these years? So I went over a couple of books and checked what other knitters do. And of course it turned out I am not doing something wrong. Still, what's up with those twisted stitches? And have we, as a knitting community, been knitting German short rows wrong all of these years? Let's head over to my desk and show you how to knit German short rows the traditional way. And then let's look at a couple of interesting swatches and show you an alternative. <laughs> So the standard way to knit German short rows goes like this. So you knit up to the position where you want to place your first double stitch. It should say make double in your pattern or something like this. And then you turn around with yarn held in front and then you slip that stitch purlwise. So point to point with yarn in front and then you pull on the working yarn, pull the stitch all the way down. So you create a double stitch here with two little legs. Then you bring the yarn forward again and purl across. That's already it. That's how you create a double stitch and the whole secret of knitting German short rows. So super simple. You can do the exact same on the other side. So I purl across until I hit the other side here. And then again, to create a double stitch, you turn your work around with yarn in front, and then you slip that stitch point to point, so purlwise, and then you pull on the working yarn to create a nice and neat little double stitch here. So, and from there you knit across, you knit across to the other side and stop knitting where your pattern tells you to stop and place the next double stitch. I stop three stitches before my double stitch here and then you turn around again, bring the yarn to the front if it isn't already there and then you slip that stitch together with the yarn point to point and pull on the working yarn to create your little double stitch. And from there you purl across until, well in my case, until I am three stitches before the double stitch here. You could also purl to right before the double stitch if your pattern tells it to do. Then I turn around and slip that stitch purlwise with yarn in front, pull on the working yarn to create a nice and neat little double stitch. And then I knit a cross. And later on, you, when it's time to finish your German short row, uh, short rows, and you've knitted enough rows, then you need to uh, decrease all your little double stitches. So you knit across, and as you hit the double stitches, you enter both legs at the same time, and you knit them together just like that. So let's do that one more time. So here is another double stitch and you enter both legs at the same time and you knit them together. And then after you've knitted that last double stitch together, you would continue knitting across the rest of the row. I will turn my work around here one last time 
that's nothing you would normally do but I uh, need this for demonstration purposes as you will quickly know this and then you purl across the return row and when you hit those double stitches here here is the first double stitch you enter both legs at the same time and purl it together pull across until you hit the next double stitch and then you enter both legs at the same time and purl it together and finish your row and I'm going to knit across two or four more rows in the blue yarn to show you the results. So I've knitted across a couple of more rows. This is the result almost looks like an Egyptian eye or something like that. And we have a beautiful little short row here in a different color. Can you spot the double stitches? Let's zoom in a little bit. So we have a double stitch here and here is another double stitch. And on the other side, here is a little double stitch and this is a double stitch. So where's the difference? Well, here we have one continuous line of little V's. This is the double stitch. Here we have a continuous line of V's. But here on the other side, well, this stitch, our double stitch, the one we purled together, it's twisted. See these two legs. We don't have a continuous line of knit V's. Instead, it's twisted and the same here. So what's up with that? And now comes the interesting part. For the longest time, and if you take a look at my recent toe up sock tutorial, I've knitted the stitches on one side of my heel twisted. And that's how I learned it and, and never really gave it much thought. So if you take a look at this side here, then you might notice that here these stitches appear to be really nice and well balanced. So they aren't twisted and that's how I learned it. And that's because I knitted these twisted and you achieve this nice seamless transition. So let's show you how you can also knit German short rows. So just like before you knit up to the position where you want to place the double stitch, turn around and keep the yarn in front. But now you don't slip purlwise, instead you slip the stitch knitwise and then pull down to create your double stitch. Bring the yarn forward and purl across. So it's exactly the other way around and it will uh, work exactly the other way around on the other side. So on the knit side as well. So you knit up to the position where you want to place a double stitch, turn your work around. And now bring the yarn forward and instead of slipping it purlwise, you slip the stitch knitwise and pull down. And then continue knitting across. Let's do that one more time. So I knit up to the position where I want to place my double stitch. So here, then I turn around, bring the yarn forward if it isn't already there. Continental knitters have it a little bit easier in this case. And then you slip the stitch knitwise and pull down. Same on the other side. So let's do that one last time. So you turn your work around, bring the yarn to the front if it isn't already there. And then you slip knitwise with yarn in front and pull down to create your double stitch. And then as you knit across, you have to knit these double stitches, see all these little double stitches through the back loop. So here's our next double stitch. We knit that together through the back loop. And on the other side, let's knit across to the other side 
as we finish our short rows. Let's knit across. This now comes the, well, a little bit tricky part because here these double stitches on the purl side, you have to purl them together through the back loop. Not the easiest stitch, but in this case, as those are not, tr it's not, not two stitches, but one double stitch, it's a little bit easier. You purl it together through the back loop. loop. Purl it together through the back loop. So four rows later, let's take a look at our little swatch here. Can you spot the double stitches? Well, here we have a double stitch. Here is a double stitch. And here I've knitted another double stitch. And you can see how these legs cross each other and we created twisted stitches. And here on the other side, can you spot the double stitches? Very difficult to see. So we have one double stitch here and there's another one here. And as you can see, these form one continuous line as opposed to these double stitches where the legs cross. So what do we do with this knowledge? Well, first of all, if you follow my technique and you want to create balanced stitches, then you have to slip purl-wise when you create a double stitch on the purl side, so on this side, and you have to slip knit-wise when you want to create a double stitch on the knit side. For twisted stitches, it would be the other way around. So when you knit a German short row heel, this means here on this side, you do the double stitch the normal way and on this side, you do it the twisted way, right? Sadly, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Remember how I said I twist my stitches here on this side? But didn't I just say here on this side, you don't twist the stitches, you just sit purlwise. Yet I twisted the stitches um, on this side and you can check um, if you watch my toe up sock tutorial and yet this is the result. So what's up with that? Well, let's take a look at this swatch where I did two heel turns in a row. Here I twisted my stitches on this side and knitted it them the normal way on this side and up in here the other way around. So these are uh, slip purl wise and these are uh, slip knit wise. So let's take a look which side is neater. So I hope we can all agree that this bottom side here is a little bit neater than here at the top. But wait a moment, didn't I just say uh, for balance stitches you knit them the normal way uh, on this side and not twisted yet this side here seems to be neater. Well, I think what is happening, if you space your double stitches apart like you did, like I did for this swatch here, uh, so when you knit a shawl or something, that definitely has the ring of truth. But here for a heel, the fabric turns around, so it turns in this direction. And for lack of a better word, the, this curvature seems to untwist these stitches while the normal way brings out what is normally hidden underneath. It behaves a little bit different on this side. Here we can clearly see the twisted stitches and here the top does appear to be a little bit neater. This has to be with the knitting direction. So the twisted stitches are always twisted in the same direction, yet this, um, the here the heel turn goes to the right, yet it would have to go to the left to untwist these stitches because they're always twisted in the right direction. However, what you will or might notice it is here, while the stitches are balanced, the holes are also much more pronounced, yet here at the bottom, yet here at the bottom, there are no holes. So that is precisely the reason why I knit my uh, German short row um, simple heels like this. So let's knit that one more time together. So 
I knit up until the position where I want to uh, turn around and place my first double stitch. I never do it here right at the edge because that never looks neat. And then here on this side, on the purl side, I slip my stitch knitwise and pull down. And then I purl across the normal way or knit according to my pattern. And here on the other side, I turn my work around, bring the yarn forward and slip purlwise and pull down. Let's do that one more time. So I knit up until my double stitch, turn around, bring the yarn forward and now I slip knitwise, slip knitwise with yarn in front and pull down. Then I purl across as normal, purl across until I hit my double stitch here on this side, turn around and now I slip purlwise with yarn in front. So on this side purlwise, on this side knitwise. And then later on when it comes to finishing my uh, German short rows here, I knit across until I hit my double stitch. Here is my first double stitch and I knit that together through the back loop. So I enter through the back loop and knit that together. Easy as that. Finish my row or whatever my pattern tells me to do. And here on the other side, these double stitches are not twisted, so I can just purl them together. Just enter both legs at the same time and purl them together and then continue knitting. And two rows later, this will be the result. Here, this is the other side. So all nice and neat and no holes. So with all said and done, what should be your takeaway here? Well, you should know that there are two different ways to achieve German short rows, twisted and balanced. For the German speakers, the late Eliza would always do twisted stitches and I also prefer to use twisted double stitches. But that really doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Depending on your project, as we've seen, your knitting style and your individual tension, you might notice that one way is better than another. So I recommend picking up a little piece of scrap yarn and knit a little swatch cast on 16 stitches like I did here and check what works better for you. And from there, you will be able to knit short row heels or bustards or colorful shawls with short rows that are even neater. Anyway, that was my video on German short rows. Make sure to comment if you would like me to record a video that digs deeper into the other ways to knit short rows. And of course, as always, happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.